Hello, thank you for watching You Had Options. This week I have Dan Barrero on, good friend, known him for a long time. Uh, he's the bassist for the band uh, Destroy Orbison, playing Fest this year. Check them out at Destroy underscore Orbison. Yeah, and uh, check out You Had Options. It's at You Had Options everywhere on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, you can go to the Twitch and follow it uh, twitch.tv slash you at options you know, I appreciate all the support and all the help I've gotten you know on this on this program I appreciate it thank you Thank you for joining What's me. What's up, dude? Hi. Thanks for having me. Of course. Known you for a long time. It only makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, how have you been? Dude, I've been good. Just trying to get through this pandemic like everyone else. Yeah. Just trying to trying to live life, try to stay positive. It's tough, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's tough out there. It's easy to be negative. Uh, yeah. You guys just put out a, a new single, right? Mm-hmm. Destroy Orbison? Yeah. Yep, we just put it out, man, maybe right around a, about a week ago now, titled Dick. Mm. <laughs> why, uh, why do you guys call it Dick? Uh, so I actually didn't write the song. I mean, I, I helped, but uh, it was actually written by uh, Anthony, our rhythm guitarist. Right. And uh, I can't really relate all too well to the song, but uh, I guess he had a terrible upbringing. Up Bringing, I guess, from his father, so he mm. just has a real hate, real hatred towards him. So <laughs> okay. yeah, he just he, he wrote he wrote it about him. And, okay. Uh, so I I, I kind of for me I kind of uh, I guess I guess just people that I've grew to hate through work or you know just shitty bosses and stuff like that. That's yeah. what I relate to. But but the song's about his father. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, everybody can relate to a, a person you hate in your life. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I actually don't have many people I hate. I really don't. But when I do hate someone, I really hate it's them. It's strong. It's not, it's not. Yeah. Well, you're a nice, you're a nice yeah. guy and you seem to, yeah. I don't, I've, I haven't in, in our time together, I've never heard you be like a total, uh, gossipy turd or anything like that, you know. <laughs> I, I I could be a dirtbag. Just ask my bandmates. No, yeah. maybe. <laughs> uh, man, you've lost. You look like you've lost a lot of weight. I have. You got it going on. What uh? Yep. What are you doing? All right. So uh, I haven't really told many people this. So my family. My coworkers and my bandmates know this, but um, Exclusive. I, man, <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm opening myself up to you. Play, oh. uh, so, man, I, I kind of went on a like just one of those all you can eat diets <laughs> where you could just, you know, like I, I just live carelessly for years. I drink a lot of alcohol. Uh, I eat a lot. I don't I don't exercise. I just, you know, live that careless life. And um you know, my doctors have always told me that I was healthy. I was good. Um, it didn't make sense, but magically I was healthy for some, some odd reason. Uh, so yeah, I just never really, uh, it wasn't uh, a priority to take care of myself. Uh, and then all of a sudden within a, I had a doctor's appointment and then within a three month time span, uh, dude, I got hit with the type two, the oh, uh, diabetes. Shit. 
Yeah. So, and, and I never saw that coming. My doctors didn't even see it coming or anything like that. So I'm, um, I'm thinking maybe my pancreas or something took a hit. A- anyways, long story short, I got it. And so that kind of fucked with my brain. So Damn. I went, I went to the diet. I, uh, my, you know, the, my doctors tell me, uh, you know, diet weight loss is going to be key for me. And, uh, I, I just went with what I knew worked the fastest. Cause I I'm pretty extreme about everything I do. So right. I took, I took, I actually went with the keto diet, yeah. uh, because that's like the real, most realistic diet that I can, I can do, you know, where I could still eat like shit and enjoy myself. And, right. You know? So, yeah, uh, honestly, man, I, uh, I've been on keto for about three months and then at about my month and a half mark, I actually reversed my diabetes. Like I don't, what? Te- te- yeah, technically, technically I don't have it anymore. I mean, like, I, I don't know if there's a cure for it, but yeah, I don't, I don't have it. Like my blood's good. Everything's good to go. So, and, just- and so I actually, I was actually, this is embarrassing, but I actually hit my all time worst, 264 pounds. And I got down to 207. Damn. Well, cause how yeah, tall are you? You're not a, um, you're not a, no, I'm not very, a, a tall guy. No, I'm only five nine. So, so yeah, I look like <laughs> two sixty at five nine is that's yeah. That's a lot to carry around. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of people uh, like I, I was big, but everyone always told me, man, you don't look that big. Like, yeah, you can lose some weight, but you don't look two sixty plus. So I guess I, I carried it well, but yeah, I guess it was killing me on the inside. So I had to do something quick. Yeah. It's a, it's crazy. Like, cause I was, I got up to like close to 270 and I, same thing. I went to the doctor and they're like, man, your blood work is like shit. You need to change something or you're going to, you know, have a, They have a, a, a stroke or, or like, a, you yeah. know, have a, my, my cholesterol was really bad. And so, uh, I was like, fuck. So I did keto for like three or four months and now I'm kind of just, yeah. I've changed to like, um, like one meal a day pretty much. Yeah. Uh, did, intermittent fasting. A lot of, a lot of stuff. intermittent fasting stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, it's crazy. Cause I was the same way. I was like. Well, I don't think I look that bad, but like yeah. I could tell I felt like shit all the time and like really? I was eating shitty and you know, yeah, just yeah. drinking too much and just, you know, carrying on being an asshole to my body. <laughs> and so, yeah, starting to work but out. Dude, that, that, yeah. that, that was the weird thing about me is that I, I still feel the same. Like really? I don't feel, everyone's like, dude, uh, they're like, dude, you should feel better than that. Dude, I actually feel like shit right now like my back hurts i think i think it's because i'm used to carrying so much weight now my posture's all bad i i, I feel worse now than i did before to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> but i i mean my clothes fit better right you know? yeah like <laughs> my clothes my, my clothes fit better and uh and i guess i guess i look better i, I don't know but I, I definitely don't feel better and it's like uh that's not normal feel <laughs> like feel how like you just like you're just saying like your muscle or your your bones feel weird or uh i think i was compensating a lot before yeah and i got used to dude i was i was heavy for a long time even even when i lived in florida and we'd play shows with you guys all the time i was still 230 240 yeah. i was probably just hiding it really well but um i i got used to carrying a lot of weight for a long time so Getting down to 207, uh, I hadn't been that in like 20 years. Yeah. So, so now I'm having a hard time, like, with my posture and like, you know, I just my back hurts. I have to go to a chiropractor all the time. So Ooh. I don't know. Maybe I need to start working out. Start working out, bro. <laughs> uh, so that shit, that shit sucks. It, yeah, it's not fun. But uh, <laughs> so you started. All you were doing was dieting to lose all the weight. Dude. Uh, honestly, I have not worked out a single day. It's Damn. strictly eating. And, uh, yeah, I'm a firm believer that, uh, I mean, I, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a physical fitness guy or anything <laughs> like that, but Danny I, I'm fitness. a believer. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm a believer that uh, when it comes to pure weight loss, I think 95% of it is what you eat. For and sure. then work, working out is how you want to look. Yeah, man. That's, so. uh, man, Arnold said, you know, abs are made in the kitchen. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's diet. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you, I didn't know if uh, type 2 diabetes was reversible or not, but... Yeah. Yeah. They said, uh, I mean, it's not, there's no lifetime cure, right? but, yeah. uh, when they say reversible, uh, yeah, it's just like some, the doctor compared it to <laughs> what, uh, what pregnant women sometimes get during, uh, you know, their pregnancy to get that, uh, gestational diabetes or whatever it's yeah. called where it's, it's temporary or whatnot. So yeah, I think my pancreas, something happened with my pancreas took a hit through, ah. through my shit out of whack. So yeah. Well, hey, what are you drinking? Uh, just Jack. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's crazy. That congratulations. Um. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah, it's uh. I'm pretty proud of myself, to be honest with you. I haven't stuck with anything like a diet for that long. Yeah. So Is your? I usually make excuses. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's easy. Is uh is your sleep better? Is, have you noticed other things in your life that are better? Uh, I think I think sleep for my wife is better. She says I don't snore like crazy or anything. Yeah, she says I don't snore at all. Yeah, man. So um, I don't think my sleep is better, but maybe maybe it is. I don't feel it. I honestly I don't feel better at all. <laughs> That's why, which is which is rare. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I might look better in my sleep because my wife says I'm not struggling. I'm not snoring or anything. So did but uh, I still wake up tired? <laughs> did, uh, did they have you like testing your blood and stuff like with when, when they said you had type two? Yeah. Yeah. They, they tested it. Like, so, uh, no, but did they have uh, you doing like your own blood tests like at home, like all the time? Uh, oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I had this little kit, this, uh, glucose monitor or whatnot. And, uh, they said for me, my diabetes, I barely had it. It was one of those where it wasn't like full blown. You're like, just all, over fuck. the, you're just over the line. Yeah. So like I technically had it, but like the doctor was like, don't freak out, you know, but you need to monitor this kind of test your body, see what you can and can't do yeah. kind of thing. So, uh, but in your life, have have you like when somebody's like hey you need to change this thing or you're going to be fucked yeah how how have you responded before to stuff like that terrible man just being like fuck you i'm not gonna dude (laughs) so i'm gonna tell you the kind of person i am um i don't ever believe that bad shit's gonna happen to me it's never me that's that's dude i i'm like dude that ain't going to be me. So I, I learn lessons the hard way. Like you could tell me a thousand times if I agree with you, then cool. But if I don't agree with you, I'm, I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm a dirt bag, man. And dude, honestly, <laughs> so, when, when this shit came down, I was devastated. Cause dude, it can't be me. Right? right. That's how, that's my mentality. But my wife told me, she was like, I mean, I, I'm not happy that you have it. It sucks. But uh, in a way I'm kind of glad that you have it because you weren't going to listen to anybody wake up call. So, yeah. so, so now you got to listen to your body. Your body ain't going to lie to you. So I was like, fuck. So yeah, I kind of had to take a back seat and like get over myself for, you know, for once and, uh, actually listen to someone. It's tough, man. Surrendering, <laughs> surrendering is tough, man. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. But, but yeah, uh, I don't, I'm, I might not feel better, but I know I am better. So that's, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. And it's, I imagine, you know, it's tough speaking in my own experience It's tough, uh, to tell somebody in your life that you care about, like, Hey, you should probably change this thing, you know? Cause it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of like a lot of people, myself included need to like, like you were just saying, find stuff figure stuff out the hard way. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, good luck telling people our parents age to change. That's even worse. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't know. I think people in our generation are a little more, you know, a little more open-minded and stuff like that. But man, I know 
trying to tell my parents to change some shit, it's uh, it's going to be a no go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing yoga, this yoga routine for a while now, Pr- pretty much nice. since whenever, whenever I decided to uh, s- stop treating my body like shit all the time. Yeah. Uh, earlier this year, um, and so I was. You know, I'll go over to my parents' house. My dad will be like, oh, man, I'm, I just feel like, you know, I feel like crap all the time because, you know, my 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 muscles and my bones just ache. I'm like, well, do you stretch at all? He's like, I don't believe in stretching. I'm like, all right, right on. I wasn't, <laughs> so I wasn't even, missing. yeah, I wasn't even like, I wasn't even like, hey, man, you should do yoga. I was like, do you stretch at all? That was it. And they're like, no, I don't think it works. I'm like, right on. Uh, Respect. Yeah. Dude, I just... I just had a weird conversation with my dad not that long ago because, uh, you know, I mean, I grew up in the, in the, uh, you know, 80s, 90s and whatnot. So, like, there was no fact checking anything that my parents said. Right. So, I, I like, you I grew up w- yeah. exactly like what my parents said. That is. That's law. It. Yeah. You don't, you don't question that shit because it's right. Right. And, you know, I, I recently asked my dad, I was like the fuck were you guys thinking like like some of this shit i grew up with is just like kind of wild then you know he was just like my dad you know was definitely understanding he was just like actually i I don't want to say admitted fault but just like you know expressed to me that they were working with what they had you know like basically the news right newspapers and stuff like that so you know a lot of it a lot of their um uh, their tactics with certain things or whatnot just came from like forming their own opinion, not really knowing kind right. of things. Uh, yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Wild times. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's crazy. Uh, when you become an adult and you realize, Oh, your parents were just, just dummies trying to make sense of the world too. When, when you were a yeah. kid. Uh, Oh Yeah you're you're a parent yeah. so what uh you got two <laughs> you got you got two two uh two daughters yeah uh i do the uh yep what's the and they're they're young they're they're not like babies they're like young yeah. young peep young kids young people now uh yeah what's the uh what's the craziest um I guess, uh, thing going on for you as a, as a, that you've learned as a parent recently? Well, I, I'm, I'm seeing the struggles that my parents had with me. Mm. Um, I don't, my, my, my kids are, my kids are not nowhere near, like not even close to, you know, as bad as I was. Like I was a terrible, terrible kid. Like, I'm, I was one of those kids. If you could raise me, then you could probably do anything in right. this world, like with a breeze. Cause yeah. I, I was going to definitely, I was going to be the one that tested you for sure. Yeah. Um, honestly, um, what I've learned is that when you have kids, the first few years of their lives, um, that, that, that is going to determine like they're just de- like the certain the things that they do for the rest of their lives like right. you know they're like I'm, I'm like you know like their values like for me the first few years you got it you know ingrained values like you know the things that you believe in the things that are right and what's wrong and whatnot and then and but ultimately i'm a firm believer that they develop their personality based on who they choose to associate with so like i feel like me and my wife have given them you know, like the basic building blocks or whatnot. Now, how they choose to utilize that with who they choose to hang out with or whatnot is going to basically mold them into who they become. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I have the same morals as my parents, but that's about it. Like, I don't like my, I'm nothing like my parents. I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a product of all the people I've chose to associate with all my life uh, outside of family. So, but I do catch myself, like, I remember as a kid, my dad used to flip the fuck out and get pissed off. And, you know, I would tell myself, man, I would never be like that. And guess what? I'm exactly like that. Right, man. Cats in the cradle, man. (laughs) It's in, it's in the blood, dude. Cats in the the cradle. 
Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think uh, what you're just saying of like you're setting a, a standard for the rest of their their lives. I think yeah. you know. Because uh, yeah. you know, the older I get, it's like, man, I people I don't want to be around. I'm just like, okay, like you're not, you're not gonna be in my life. You know, like I'm not yeah. gonna make time for you. I'm, I'm not gonna be like, not gonna be oh. a dick. But I'm not gonna. I I just I don't want anything to do with you. Like I'm. Yeah, dude, life's too short to not like to have shittiness in it. You know what I mean? Right, like yeah. you just like surround yourself with people that make you happy that dude like seriously that i feel like that is the key to a long life Mm -hmm. being pissed off and stressed out and i think that shit kills faster than anything it's not worth it man yeah Yeah, it's it's too easy to to have like uh just haters around you that just kind of bring you down and hate negative people whatever yeah Mm. yep and, that, and that's usually just people that don't have anything going on in their lives that are like of note or they just hate something about themselves or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. We're getting- yeah. I've, I've, I've noticed that I've seen a lot of unhappy people and I feel like the trend is taking your shittiness and like making other people, you know, bringing Bring, people to their level, bringing them down. It's like, no, uh, bringing them down. Them. What? Um, mm-hmm. So you guys are playing fest this year. Going <laughs> to pivot yeah. here. from. <laughs> Yeah. Give it the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, uh, man, it's exciting. Again, bl- blessed to blessed to even be part of the lineup. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, we owe everything to Tony and the Fest crew. Oh, you yeah. know, for even considering us and oh yeah, just an amazing group of people for sure. Yeah, it's fun. There's no other festival like it. You know, mm-hmm. it's a, a bunch of like-minded people. It's for the most oh, part, yeah. you know, but it's all, it's not all the same bands, same type oh, yeah. of bands, you know, there's a good cross section of, of bands in the punk rock world. Um, yeah. what, uh, yeah. what, uh, what are some of the bigger bands that you're excited to see? Man, uh, for me, uh, I'll, obviously uh teenage bottle rocket that's up there for me i love the lawrence arms um uh, i'm gonna have to see red city radio this year for sure they're another band that i love um another band that is big for me but maybe not as big as they need big as they they should be uh tight wire oh there's a band that i want yeah i love i love oh yeah i love that band um yeah i'm just uh yeah um I'm, I I want to say I want to see all these bands and stuff like Too that many bands. but I just there's not enough I just time. Know, yeah, I just know realistically it's impossible to be impossible to be in all those places at the same time so right. um which honestly I thought like uh Fest 18 was my first fest, you know, like with my shitty work schedule or whatnot, I've never really been able to take the time off to consistently be off those days or whatnot because those are, you know, popular days for people to take off. But uh, honestly, Fest 18, I was a little afraid with my like anxiety and stuff being around a ton of people. I thought it was going to be a problem. I thought I was going to, you know, hate it and be uncomfortable. But man, I've never been around so many people that, you know, that are, that's like the same, you know, going through the same shit. So like, I actually felt like everything was perfect. Yeah. It was the first time, it was the first time I was able to, in a long time that I was able to be around a lot of people and be totally cool with it. Yeah. You know? Well, so, I, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good environment. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, going to other music festivals that I've gone to, uh, it's yeah, it's not the same thing because some people could be there drinking too much, mm-hmm. wanting to get rowdy, start fights. Oh, I've, yeah. I don't, you know, I, I've out of, out of all the fests that I've been to, I've never seen a fight. You know, I've never seen no. people like screaming at each other in the street. You know, yeah. so. Dude, it's uh, it's weird because I, you know, I had a good time at Fest being around thousands of people, but I, I can't even go to the grocery store <laughs> during peak hours. Which grocery store are you going to? <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, I live in San Antonio, Texas. So in Texas, we have this thing called HEB, grocery store called HEB. And uh, man, shout out for me, it's yep, shout out to HEB. <laughs> H-E-B. Uh, 
<laughs> they, uh, man, they really stepped it up during this pandemic, man. I have a, you know, bigger love for this uh, company, but yeah, man, it's like, honestly, uh, I hate to say it, but I mean it. It's the greatest grocery store I've ever been to. Uh, yeah. And I'm a, I'm a huge lover of Publix. Right. I lived in Florida, Florida guy, for a yeah. while. And, uh, man, sorry, sorry guys, but, uh, H E H E B. H E B. I love it, man. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, it's always crowded in H E B. And I just, you know, I have to go first thing in the morning or super late at night because I just cannot be around, you know. Is but it- fest, fest is, you know, fest is good. Right. <laughs> is it, uh, is it 24 hours, H E B? No. Um, they, I want to say the one I go to is open till 11. Okay. 11, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, 11 or 12. Yeah. Yeah. Anxiety, man. It's it's a real, real thing. Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah. Um, it's tough. It's tough to deal with because it's just like racing, you know? It's just like ratcheting up, you know? That's the, mm-hmm. the whole thing. Um, I don't know. Cause I, I deal with it and I've taken medication, all that, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that, that's not the like end all be all. It's, you also have to no. do shit on your own. Uh, um, yeah. Wow. We're, we're getting super deep. I didn't expect us to get yeah, we are. so deep on this. Episode. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was, I was expecting, uh, Hey, so what kind of alcohol do you like to drink? And, uh, you, you know, like the basic, the basic God, questions. No, that's, Shit. uh, uh, for this podcast. Cause I know I've listened to other like punk rock centric podcasts and yeah. it's like very formulaic of like, like what you're just saying where it's like, so what's your favorite beer, you know, or whatever, <laughs> like what's your favorite fucking screeching, re- screeching weasel record. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. all fun, but that's yeah. you know I would rather have act, is, actual conversations instead of uh, you know, whatever you know. Yeah, this is real life. <laughs> yeah, this is real life. Hey, just remember, not a lot of people know about my uh, diabetes, my I, type two. I know. I didn't even know. You know, this is yeah. exclusive to me. You know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, but I'm yeah. I'm glad you're on the opposite end now. Yeah, uh, I hope, uh, you know, you know, uh, shit, I hope people who listen to this that might have it, uh, uh, you know, can just gain that confidence, you know what I mean? Because my doctor was telling me that uh, most people uh, at our age, uh, they usually just take the medicine to maintain their current lifestyle. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, he told me... uh, I actually motivated him. He said he didn't think it was possible to reverse it that fast. So I actually, he actually <laughs> used my scenario and all my numbers, obviously without sharing my name, but he uh, created a slideshow presentation. Yeah. Nice. He said, uh, he, he has to get this word out because you know, a lot of people think it's like, fuck, you That's know, I'm end. screwed. And yeah, you don't have to be that way, man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, um, I watched some trash TV and so I watched like my 600 pound life and stuff like that. (laughs) And it's, it's always like, man, just fucking change something, make incremental steps. But it's always, and you know, obviously there's like mental illness going on. It's Uh, because nobody's like, well, I'm okay being, you know, 600, you know, 700 pounds, whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I think I think a lot of people think it's just like too daunting of a task or too overwhelming when it's really just like yeah. small steps, like incremental right. changes to to to. Well, dude, it's this. Yeah, it's the shit we were just talking about. Like, tell someone who's been eating fucking twenty meals a day not to do that shit. Right. Dude, that shit's hard, man. That's true. To, yep. You know, change ch- change your life, dude. Uh, I actually the. One thing that I've seen since doing keto is that before, the more you eat, the more you want to eat. Yeah, bro. Uh, when I did when I did intermittent fasting and I was doing keto, 
dude, I would eat and I'd be fucking happy, man. Yeah, man. And I was ne I, I never got like, like hangry. You yeah. know, I used to get hangry. Now I don't get hangry. I'm just like, well, I eat when I need to eat. Yeah, and, man. um, just, but you gotta be, you gotta want it, you know, to it's reverse true. it kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So. It's, it's definitely a slippery slope and you also have to, you know, you can't, you can't make someone want, like it goes back to saying like, Hey, you know, if, you can't tell somebody in your life, Hey, I think you need to change. You know, it's, they have yeah. to want it before they're going to actually make the actual yep. changes. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like everything in life. You yeah. know, you have to want it. Yeah. No. Hmm. So you <clears throat> played guitar and destroy Orbison, but now you're a bassist. Yes. Why? I'm, yes. I'm pivoting again. I like to do that where, where <laughs> we talk about something serious and then I pivot to, to something. Uh, so what made you, so you went to bass and now you're yeah. strictly bassist. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I haven't, I, I mean, I, I have a guitar, but I don't really, yeah, I just, uh, for me, I feel like, uh, bass is more my instrument. I feel more, you know, like I can, cause I'm not, I'm not a very good bass player, uh, you know, but I can I'm relate. Also singing, yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm singing and playing at the same time. So, you know, I feel like it's easier to focus the simple on the simple shit if I'm singing and yeah. playing um, than play guitar. Right. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. I've uh, I picked up guitar uh, back in 2006. So I was kind of late in the game. And uh, the only reason why I picked up guitar is because my buddy Roy, who I was in my first band with Crimson Kill uh, and, you, you know, Roy. Yeah. yeah um he was already wanting to play the bass so i was like well there can't be two bass players in this band so uh i'll pick up you know right. I'll, I'll pick up the guitar and basically play what he's gonna play on the bass just right. the root notes you know yeah, just bro. like the bass the basic rhythm shit that's all you need so that's that's uh yeah I've, i feel like i've always been a bass player at heart but uh you know I just picked up the rhythm guitar. So mm -hmm. that's where I started with that. Yeah. You're a, you're also one of the most, uh, gear guy that yeah. I know of, mm -hmm. of going in and out of different guitars and amps yep. and oh, <laughs> yeah. cabs. What, uh, yeah. uh, I love it. Cause you would always, you'd like text me or something about a bass and I'd be like, yeah, whatever. And then, <laughs> you know, you know, I think, uh, I think you're playing like a P bass before, but now you're using music man. Uh, oh yeah. And, uh, which that's all I use now. Cause it's the best bass that I've ever played. I've got two of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. Are you, are you still, are you, are you constantly looking for the, the next thing to change like your sound? So for me, what's up with I've that? I've had this, pro yeah. I have, I've had this problem since I was a little kid and my parents hated it. And now my wife is constantly reminding me of it, but, uh, it's, it's one of those things. I'm never happy with what I have. Like the only thing, the only thing that I've consistently like kept were my friends and my family, yeah. uh, everything else, everything else, like, you know, is so easily replaceable for me. And like, I don't grow attachment to stuff like, like my brother, you know, he got his first guitar and he told me no matter how shitty or how great it is, doesn't matter. He's that that's for life. Like that's, yeah. it has sentimental value for him. I don't have that for me. I see them as tools. And once, uh, once I find in my opinion, a better deal or a different deal that like triggers me more, I have no ties. Like as long as, you know, I can break even or make enough to buy the next best thing for me. Yeah. That's so yeah, I mean it's kind of a sickness, man. It's kind of a an addicting buying, selling, trading, regretting, you know, roundabout right, bullshit. Um, you don't have your first guitar? No. Oh. No. <laughs> and you know, you know what sucks? I'll tell I'll, I'll tell you what my first official guitar was. It was an Ibanez Art Core. It was a semi hollow body um, guitar. And, uh, it was, it was cheap. It was like a $200 guitar. And, uh, this guy named Aaron over in, uh, he was in scars and stripes over in Fort Walton beach. He, you know, used to work at a guitar store and he told me, why don't you get, why don't you get yourself a Gibson? Like get, get, get a Gibson Les Paul. 
And I was like, nah, man, that shit's too expensive. And he said, when you buy something expensive, look at it as an investment and you're less likely to quit whatever it is that you're doing. You'll, you, so I did, I was like, you know what, let me sell this Ibanez guitar. I bought a Les Paul studio and fuck (laughs) it, that, that, that's, uh, you know, there's definitely a difference in quality. There's a reason people play Les Pauls. There's a reason people play SGs, Gibsons, you know, just in general fenders, you know, it's just, yeah. So that, that was the start of my, yeah, gear collect. Uh, I don't want to say collection. My gear purchasing. I feel that. Just, yeah, I feel that, man. Yeah, uh, I do have my first base, um, but after that, I don't have any uh, particular like uh, whatever uh, need to keep. You know, every little thing that mm-hmm. I have. You know, uh, nostalgia, I guess. What yeah. uh, what are you playing? What's your, what's your base? Give me give me give me a rig rundown uh, of what you're playing through now. All right, so just because I'm a gear right, guy, so so I <laughs> I have four Stingray classics right what now. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you I, maniac. Now, so I've uh, currently I have an I have a Ampeg eight ten. It's a, it's an anniversary edition 810 cab. And, uh, I have the orange OB one 500, uh, solid, you know, state. solid, yeah. solid state. Um, and I also have a orange AD 200, uh, all two head mm. that I, that I never use because it's, I'm just kind of tired of lugging amps like that around. Too heavy. Uh, it, it, it is. I, uh, and it's kind of crazy because the 810 is probably the most inconvenient cab to bring around anywhere but i'm not gonna i don't want to sacrifice the tone i get out of that um but the head you know uh, i feel like the orange uh ob1 500 uh is good it does the job good enough at like a fraction of the weight so that's what i've been using the the solid state head with the 810 cab and um i've tried d- different models of stingrays and uh Man, I, I feel like the classics, you know, there's something about that slab body, that uh, two band EQ. Uh, I like the gloss neck. So, you know, there's something about that that uh, really sits well with me. Uh, you know, some of the newer Stingray specials, I've, tr- I've tried them and uh, I just feel like they changed the tone too much. Uh, you know, a lot of bass players like to sit in the mix. I'm one of those guys that like to cut through the mix. So I, I'm, I'm, a, uh, like I'm a huge fan of that zingy trebly, you know, old school stingray sound. So that's why I choose to play the classics. They're, they're a great bass, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I play. Uh, we actually got a show tonight. What? So, yeah. What, uh, I'll be using. what's your show tonight? Who, who, who are you guys playing with? Where are you playing? This uh, isn't going to come out, but <laughs> before <laughs> come out before the show, but yeah. Yeah. Now uh, we're playing uh, downtown San Antonio off of St. Mary's Strip at a place called The Mix, which is that's where, where, we play. uh, where you played, yeah, when yeah. you came through. So we're playing there tonight with uh, our buds in a band called Nothing Lost and also some of our other buddies in a band called Knockin' Chucks. Nice. So we're pretty pumped about that. Yeah, man. Is this y'all's well, first show back? It is. It is our first shit. This is, this is my first show. Uh, I was going to say since Fest 18, but no, I played two shows in uh, January, February of 2020. So right before this pandemic. Uh, but yeah, I haven't played anything since then. Yeah. So it's been a while. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. you, man. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, shit, why do you play Stingrays? Why Stingrays? So I was playing the Mark Hoppus, uh, Fender, uh, whatever custom, you know, I I bought his bass and, uh, I loved that bass. And then I was like, well, shit, like just, just like you where I'm like, always looking, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was like, well, man, you know, I might as well just fucking, uh, upgrade to, uh, I, I got the. First, I got the old smoothie, like reissue, uh, 
in must have been like 20 I can't remember when 2017 maybe and uh yeah I was like man this is the best bass I've ever played before and yeah. so I was like well I need a backup and so yeah. I just went on reverb. I, I bought the initial one from uh, Sweetwater be, just because okay. they're so good with if, if something, if there's a problem, you know, yeah. you just, they're just like, okay, well, we'll, we'll handle it. We'll, we'll make you a new base and we'll send it out to you. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I was just like, okay, this is fucking sick. And then I just found the same, uh, the same like gold flake uh, stingray on reverb with the same uh same setup i was like okay well there you go okay nice yeah, man and I, i'm i'm playing through oh i love it i'm playing through a 610 uh mesa and then nice the head is a mesa tube and um it's the best rig i've ever had and i don't feel like i'm gonna change uh nice the the head is heavy but it's not like it's a little bit smaller than uh, yeah, like the orange or Ampeg. So oh yeah, the Ampeg Ampeg is terrible to bring yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I've you know I've been contemplating going to like dark glass or like the the orange uh, solid state that that you yeah. have, but I'm like, eh, this isn't terrible to carry yeah. around. So yeah. No, I've heard good things about Mesa. I've never actually tried one, but I've heard good things mm-hmm. for sure. But that's great. And I don't, I don't see a lot of people playing. That's that's another thing for me. I don't see a lot of people playing like Mesa, bass heads, and so mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, this will separate Something a little different. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. I t- I tend to go with the safe. What's safe? Like I, you know, like I've. I, I do a lot of YouTubing, so I like I'll, I'll watch uh, you know like an amp review, and I'm just like, man, that sounds really good. That sounds pretty safe. I'm I'm not really you know no, I'm always stuck with damn, stingrays you got, and live on the yeah. edge, brother. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know that's I started off playing P basses because that is the safest, in my opinion, the safest bass for the You're music. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's never gonna suck. You know what I mean? Right. But it's also gonna always sound like a P bass. Right. So it's uh. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's yeah, but yeah, I'm a I'm a stingray guy, man. I have one P bass because I feel like you got to have one, but I don't think I'd ever play it over my stingrays for sure. Hell no. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. I, I just think I, I just think music man Ernie Ball music man uh, is consistently, in my opinion, just a, a better instrument. Uh, you know, con- they're more consistent from my experience. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I have, I've been doing like this uh, lightning round at the end of uh, episodes recently. Do you want, are you down to do a lightning round of questions? Yeah, uh, sure. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what a lightning round. Well, it's just like you, you just answer the question. I'm going to, I'm going to fire off questions and you just answer them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what's your favorite, uh, truck stop slash gas station on the road? <sighs> Bucky's Bucky's. Hmm. Damn. I could have, I could have, <laughs> I could have answered that. Yeah. You, you know, we, ha- we have a Bucky's now like in Alabama. That's like 20 minutes away from my apartment. Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah, I saw that. I saw that when we were playing Fest 18. We drove and we actually stopped there. I was like, wait a minute. How the fuck did that? I thought Bucky's was a Texas thing. It was. It's, it's made its way. I think that was the yeah. first. I think that was the first Bucky's outside of Texas, like in yeah. the history of, of Bucky's. Um, yeah, no, I honestly, for me, hands down, not, not like there's, it, it's Bucky's for me, for sure. Like, right. I have a phobia of using, you know, like having a shit in a terrible gas station. Not Bucky's. No, man. Bucky's, yeah, they take pride in all their stuff. You've got your own stall. They're, you know, yeah. it's, it's it's like <laughs> yeah. cemented. You know, the, the yeah. you don't have, you're not sharing space with the other stalls next to you, you know? Yeah. I understand that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. This, oh, man, this might be a bad question then. 
Uh, what's Fuck. the worst punk rock bathroom that you've had to go on number two in? Ooh, so, uh, man, I, this is embarrassing. I, I refuse to sh- like, like take shits at venues and stuff like that. So I usually, I will usually go somewhere else to shit, but I will say this. I want to, I think coasters, coasters in Fort Walton hmm. would, would have been pretty rough for me. Uh, but no, I, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't taken a shit. Uh, <laughs> Dan, you got to explore this, man. You got to live a little. <laughs> Uh, now I'm a bashful shitter, dude. <laughs> bashful shitter, Jesus. That's gonna be the the title of your book. <laughs> bashful. I'm a bashful shitter. Yeah. No. I. I don't know. I. Man. Uh. You know what? You know what venue would have been bad? No. I take that back. I have shit in a venue, and it was horrible. The handlebar in Pensacola. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah i've shitted in that same bathroom yeah it was terrible <laughs> yeah 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 that'd be right, there you go yeah the handlebar See? pensacola florida yeah terrible terrible shit session <laughs> the <laughs> worst shit session oh yeah. shit what was uh what was your last tattoo my last tattoo i actually shit do you want to see it it's yeah. on my calf man show it i don't give a shit Oh, this guy. Okay. So, um, it's a crimson kill. It's uh, the first band that I was ever in the, basically a group of guys that I learned how to play music with. Uh, um, and I know, you know, them really well. Um, we all decided we went to Vegas, uh, right before this pandemic, like February of 2020. So before anyone knew anything, we were partying in Vegas and we said, you know what, let's fucking get tattoos. And uh, we never got around to doing it in Vegas. Right. So I just, when I got home, that was one of the first things I did was got my Crimson Kill tattoo. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> what's the uh, most recent moment um, where you were like, oh, it's weird that the universe has put me here? Hmm. In, in this spot man uh fuck i haven't i haven't really thought of that uh i maybe recently at uh because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a firefighter that's what i do for a living uh so like some some of these call I see people like at their at their worst point in their mm, life sometimes. Yeah. And uh just being able to like, you know, you know, uh talk to them and help them, you know, in their shitty situation or right. whatnot, you know, and just seeing the gratefulness that they have in their that, you know, they don't even ninety percent of the time they don't even say anything, but you could just tell just looking at them, yeah, you know. They they really appreciate it. So I feel I feel like in a way, like, you know, right. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah. Like that, yeah. that's what, that's, that's what I'm here for. Right. Yeah. That's the the same thing with, with Rob where it's just like, you know, the people that are calling, this is the worst day of their life, you know? And that happens yeah. a couple of times. That might happen a couple of times a day on a call, yeah. you know? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Man, we're so deep. This is the deepest podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it really? No. I mean, it's deep. Like it's good. No, I mean, because yeah. we have me and you have a connection just because we know each yeah. other, you know. Yeah. And so it's, it's uh, I, th- I think it's pretty deep, you know. Yeah, I think it's pretty deep. Yeah, uh, for sure. What is your favorite regional beer? Oh man, dude, honestly, Lone Star. No, <sighs> well, my favorite, I have, I have two, like. I'm a huge fan of Yingling. Ooh, yeah. Huge fan of Yingling uh, to the point where, like, when I when I leave Texas and go, you know, I, I think Louisiana would be the nearest uh, nearest state for me to get it. But like, I'm bringing cases and cases of Yingling back home. Yeah. Um, I also I also like Sam Ad- Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Right. Uh, 
So, but yeah, I, I'd have to say Yingling. Yingling's my favorite for sure. Yeah, Yingling's great. And uh, in Mobile, it's super easy to get because it's just everywhere. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. going outside of Mobile, it's it's always funny. I'm like, I don't see any Yingling here. Like that's my like go to like cheapish beer. It's like Miller Lite or Yingling, and uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yep. Shout out, shout out to Yingling up in, mm-hmm. up in Pittsburgh. Uh, what's mm. the most expensive T-shirt you, that you bought? Shit. Probably probably one of my button up shirts. Like I T shirt. I, what... T shirt? I think I paid like twenty five dollars for a teenage bottle rocket shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like they had like one of their they, they had that uh shirt that they released like a couple weeks back when they did their uh live show or whatnot. Yeah. I bought I bought one of their shirts. I think it was twenty, twenty five dollars. So it was an exclusive. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. What's uh what's your perfect pizza? I'm gonna have to say, oh, man, see, I know this is unpopular, but I like I like that Hawaiian pizza. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. And and then actually I have uh some real bacon, not Canadian bacon. I like bacon on my pizza. Mm. Not not ham. Uh, yeah, ham's fine, but I'd rather have bacon, bacon. Right. Mm. What a, uh, in conjunction with your perfect pizza, uh, what do you want on your tombstone? Uh, it's, it's, I guess what I tell everyone, don't let my fucking body fool you. <laughs> Damn. Uh, ah, big body Dan. I love it. Yeah. Don't uh, let my body fool you. That's Shit, how, my bot, my bot, my body fooled my doctors. There you go, man. <laughs> you, you might be a, 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 I don't know the the perfect human. I don't know the no. the most uh, human body. You know the most biological. You know uh, can defeat diabetes in you know <laughs> yeah. in a couple weeks. Yeah. So Dan, uh, do you have any? parting words of wisdom or any anything you want to you want to tell the people uh no i'd say if uh you know if you're going through some tough times you're struggling or whatnot uh just keep your head up um like uh for i'm like the perfect example of you know the shit can hit the fan and you know you can you can most like recover from anything you know you're just gonna have to want it um yeah just uh the pandemic's been rough uh keep your head up you know we'll get we'll get through this together um yeah stay positive don't be a dirt bag <laughs> nice all right dan well uh you had options dan but you decided to talk to me and i appreciate it yeah thanks for having me man i'm uh blessed to be a part of this yeah, yeah.